So we finally made it to the village of Diana. It is literally in the mountains. You literally go through the mountains and it's a mountainous region, mountainous terrain, and then like people literally live inside of it. But it's really nice here. It is literally a village, mountainous, people living, people chilling, their basic necessities. And then you have churches, you have mosques, everyone's just coexisting with one another. And it's really beautiful and it's so quiet and I bet at night it looks absolutely beautiful. This church in Diana was actually gifted by the Hungarian government. They paid for all of it and covered the expenses and the Hungarian president actually visited this. So thank you Hungary for helping out the Assyrian people. Alright, so for the following clips, I just found it to be a lot easier to do these clips instead of full on translations. So that is exactly what I will be doing, and I will be reading them out loud to you. <laughs> إيه وخرابة قربة لإيران خاصة أدخيتها بتاوخ الفخوبة قربة بتأربي دقيقة بلكي تاوخ الفخوبة الأرمي خدشة بياشا وما سخينا ما في الإيران وقد أورغيو أرمي برب خا ترسا الطخين سورابة قربة وخمرنا سيل شوابا فهذا خانا ما وني خار خوضة لشوابا أو أمرة تيكم بغزاية إلى إلى أمرة خاتا مات الديانة شوف الدوى أمرة صلوات خالد مرقي ورقس إتوى أمرة رابة سورة البد إمان تيناتي وأنا شرابة سامة زودة كاريبة أمطارة من برضو إلى أهوالات الآيسس وشوريل وأطروات منطوية هاي رياضة قلخة قم هاوي والي فرسد بهاي رياضة قلخة قد تبقنوا بالبرايم منستر هنجري سو مطلب دي خمن مطلب دي إيبا قد أمرة فايش بن يخاتة هاوي بسيمة آن دوخلون فلقت مليون دولار so in the following clips, the bishop discusses the church and its interior design. He shares that the church was modeled using Assyrian art as we are both Assyrian and Christian. The emblems and trees of Assyria, along with the Assyrian winged bull, have pieces in this church. <laughs> جوربلان قد رابا من ديانة أمرخ لوكل و تراديشنال هاوي إدقانا إن هاوخ أخ آثوراية إن هاوخ أخ مشيخاية سو كل أنا رمزت بغزايتون قد توصدوا أي بالكوني تيلا تين علينا كل يبريشو أنا شكل بيكم بغزاية ومينا إينا كوبي بيس من إنت قد آثوراية قد تشقيلو وقم ماخيلو القموديلو القيسة وقم مسيلو ثام إنت من مدل خطا توصى أيو أنوت بريفالد دينا مخوالد دينا اليومنا الخضروان مصليوة يأمريلو يأمريلو نخلة أشورية يعني the bishop continues to share that the stained glass has biblical scriptures that are in order. First, we are human and we must do unto others as you would have them do to you. Then we move forward and we talk about prayer and we want people to remember that you are the living gospel. Then we move to the front of the church and we have Jesus' commandment to love God with all your heart and to love your neighbor as thyself. It is a step-by-step -step spiritual growth to eventually stand in front of God. <laughs> أخنان دخاوخ قربة الناشخين خدشب آتها لقامة وخمزومة باسط سلوطة ليتون, ليتون بداية أختون إيتون هيكلت آلها وروخت آلها بعمارة لبيوخون بايخ أمرخ تكلوخون آني ناشتين وارم صالو يلخة قد أختون إيتون إيتا شاررتا لينا كيبه 
لينا ليلة هو من ديتي طارسلا أمرا إلى هو بنيانا من ديتي طارسلا إيتا إنا هدام الديو آني إنا هو هيكلا قربنا في الدو فكدانا شم قماية في مارا مرة قد مخبت الآله من كل لبوخ من كل جانوخ من كل خوشاوخ ودمخبت لشواوخ أخيان سويلا سقتا ستيب باي ستيب خجر وسط روخا نيتا برميتا روخا نيتا قد أخنا الماط خلدوه بقدانا شم قمايا وخرطا يوخ أخنا كليا قمالا in the next clips, we have the priest of the Church of Indiana, and he shares the story about the people in the village. He shares that Diana is in close proximity to Iran and Turkey. That is why Diana was a big village for Assyrians. The Assyrian nation began to disperse due to religious persecution, but the people of Diana continued to stay. In 1926, Assyrians fled Hakkari to Urmia, then to Diana, and people from Ankawa came to Diana. Us, Assyrians, always like to return to our homeland. From 1926 until now, the village of Diana has been burned and under attack three times now. Yet the people continue to return. The biggest Assyrian village continues to be here. We will continue to stay here because you all, the youth of the diaspora, give us the strength to continue to stay here. <laughs> من هذا خلقها إوا خمدي ترابا قرطة أطرائي بيشن تاوا هل بورم بمشي خايوتا زي وهل بلكي مدار إتو مشي خايوتا بيشن تلخها إنا بالأغوالات ترضوبيو كامريات توينا المشي خايوتا يعني أمتا بربزي إنا ديانا بيش تاوا وشيت تقلب وثمانية مو وثماني وقشتا مدخورة لقو خاكتاوا مارالي خد السر كل بتي اتولخها وقاشي وقاشا مرقص بارده قشت قلبه وطمع واسري واشتا اخميراني قالوك وقعوديا هرويلا اي ربتت من هكاري وقرطة قعرمي وقرطة البعقوبة ومبعقوبة سقلة ناشو ديانا قا عنكاوة وعنكاوة سقلة لخا اما جرح الناطراي اما خبخ ودارخ والشوف المصلاع شرشاء قربونخ والمطواط إلى شمس دين أكاري ما خراب قربة لأن أطنبيلة أسقيلة بل كتري ساعتة ثمان ساعتة ماطي والمعطة من هذا مخوبة وتأتي والنخة قدري خدماتي شكلي وعلي شو تسالي فيها مدري ضرب قدرنا شو نخراي من شيت ألبا وطمع وإسري وإشتهل قديم يوما طلاقة ديانا بشتلا موقتة في حكمة نتية طلاقة بشتلا موقتة إينا زيما قديم يوما أخميرا لكسي أي ما تبوش قرطة إطلان بيشن تلدي إلى ديانا سابتخة مخوبة وقامات ديانا مخوبة وقاطر ديانا مخوبة نفتدي وريدة أنطنيتا إلى بخايا قاوي وبيشان إنها الإشكي رشم المريعة لها وبيشان سبب أختن يولكم خيلة قد ينقل أخنا ناو بيشان إما تفتايتم من مطروات بريش بريش إلى خيلة قد ينقل We got biryani, which is literally my favorite food. Masha, dolma, zalafa salad with rice. And then there's gurgur underneath, which is couscous. I'm so excited to eat this. First, we're gonna try this biryani. Biryani is my favorite, so. Guys, it's so good, it's so flavorful. Assyrian spices are different than anybody else's spices from the Arabs to the Kurds to the Turks. All of our spices differ from one another and of course your homeland, your spices are going to taste so good to you. Next we're going to try the dolma. Zucchini dolma is my favorite so let's try this one. Oh my god. Delicious. Absolutely delicious. It's the right amount of spice, the right amount of sour. 
right amount of dry. I love my rice a little dry, but like the zucchini is like moist and wet and it's delicious. Next, we're gonna get a spoonful. We have rice masha, which is kidney beans and a salad. What a great recipe. Now we have couscous and we're gonna try that out. Let's try it out. Mm. Y'all, I'm not even being dramatic that it tastes so good because you all know I'm so honest when it comes to food I don't like. It's delicious. I feel like it is feeding my soul. Ramina, what do you think of the food? Next, I got the fruits. Okay, it's very well known that the fruits here are delicious. So I got a peach, I got a fig, I got an apple, I got a plum, and I got a pear. And you can tell all of these are locally grown. They're, they're literally so beautiful. Now we're gonna try the fruit. Literally beautiful, let's try it. First one, we're trying the peach because peach is literally one of my favorite fruits. Look at that peach, look at the rich colors. The red, the yellow, orange, oh my god. It looks like a sunset, honestly. And it's so juicy and it's so sour. It tastes like what a peach should taste like. <laughs> right? It literally tastes what a peach is supposed to taste like. It's a nectar. It's a peach. Nectarine. Oh. Nectarine. <laughs> but it tastes delicious. <laughs> Right outside the church, you have pomegranates growing. Oh my gosh, I love that. I love that. How to have a Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's so It's so good. It's so good. It's لخا فردس <laughs> 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 Isn't that absolutely incredible? It's insane to me that without the technology we have today, somebody built this. Like, people built this. Crazy. And there's Matsumariam, the Virgin Mary, right there. And it's literally hidden in the mountains. Like, the person who discovered this is so cool. We made it up to the mountain. Oh my god. We finally made it up the mountain. Something about being in the motherland and knowing that my ancestors was here literally gets rid of the fears and anxieties. The driver was backing up the mountain, not driving. He drove up and then he backed up a quarter of the way. And I was like, oh my gosh. People can't even back out of parking spots in America. Like, oh my gosh. But anyways, it's right there. That's my ancestors, you know. And then right there is the town. And it's beautiful. I love it. And look at right there, it's glowing red. Oh, I can't wait to see what's up there. There's everyone up there. Okay, in the following scenes, I am touring Rabban Hormis Monastery, and this monastery was absolutely beautiful. So a little bit of history about this place. It is an important monastery of the Chaldean Catholic Church. So for those of you that may not know, Chaldeans are just simply Assyrians who are Catholic. This monastery was founded about 640 AD and carved out in the mountains about two miles from al Qush, Iraq, 28 miles north of Mosul. It was the official residence of the patriarchs of the Elia line of the Assyrian Church of the East from 1551 to the 18th century. And after the union with Rome in the early 19th century, it became a prominent monastery of the Chaldean Catholic Church. So a little bit about al Qush is that this is actually today a Assyrian village, an Assyrian town. It is prominently filled with Assyrians. The majority of the Assyrians here adhere to the Chaldean church and also many Assyrians from Mosul and Baghdad since the post-2003 Iraq war fled to Al-Qush for safety. 
This population in 2020 is estimated to be roughly around 4,600 people. This town used to have inhabitants both of Jewish and Christian beliefs and people coexisted with one another. As we can see here, there's many different parts of the monastery that are just so cool to look at and just knowing that these monks, these nuns, everyone kind of prayed here and gathered together without today's modern technology is incredible to me. Oh, is this actually his tomb? His cell that he used to pray in. Oh, really? Oh, wow, he this thing. What sticks? Like a rock? Yeah. yeah. So it's like a, it's like a tradition, and I think there's another tradition where you close your eyes and you have to like hold on to the cross. Like you get to speak straight forward. Oh, okay. Go to it. She did it. The views were insane, it was beautiful, and just the whole peacefulness of it and just being so high up in the mountains, it kind of reminded me of the story of Babel where they try to build a tower as high as they can to reach God. And this mountain is pretty high up, so I think they were maybe trying to do the same thing. But overall, this place was gorgeous and I highly recommend you visit it. Right here, this room that you see is where nuns and um, rabbans used to live and they used to sleep. And then they use the rest of this for their prayers and to just connect with their faith. So this experience has been really interesting because it, we're coming to this Rabban Horamas monastery that was created by Assyrians. And then we have our Assyrian Church of the East bishops here and they are one step below the patriarch and the patriarch is the head of the church. So being here and having them and having them tell us what everything means and what everything used to be used for is so cool and I think it's better justice than on a travel agent or travel youtuber or anybody could tell you because they're the experts right they live their lives and they study this stuff some of us I know it's dark but some of us are deciding to walk down the monastery instead of like driving it down because we drove it up that's for sure because that was that's that's tiring but walking it down it's beautiful, like just seeing the city and the city lights and the village lights, it's unlike anything else. I highly recommend you guys come out here and check it out. This next place that we're at is the Chaldean church and that is their Matsmariam church. And we came here to have lunch and just sit outside in the garden and get the views before we go back to our hotel and end our day. Namaste. <laughs> Guys, I look like I've been through it because I'm sweating so much. But these nighttime views are beautiful. It's so nice here. It's so peaceful, calming and relaxing and just like being surrounded by these churches and by your own people is just so beautiful. These are our garden views. Right there is the church. The one in the red is the church. And then we're sitting at the church as well. Look how beautiful the monastery looks from over here. From the church, you can see it. Look at how beautiful that site is. Cameras don't do anything justice. They they really don't, but it's just, it's beautiful. What did you guys think of the monastery? Uh, amazing. <laughs> amazing, okay. Yeah, it's really nice. Open for tourists. Oh. I thought it was super cool. It was beautiful. It was gorgeous. I loved it.